Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we've got a couple of amazingly old Armagnacs for us to look at. 50 years age stated. We have the Bacta 50. Uh, and then we have the DeRose 50 coming to us from Mark DeRose. Bacta 50 is done by Raj Bacta. Raj Bacta, famous you know, entrepreneur, does a lot of different things. Uh, and then he ended up starting Whistle Pig back around 2010. Left that company, I think, in 2020, 2019, somewhere in there. He sold off and took that money and wasn't sure what he was going to do. And then he decided, I'm going to start a different spirit company. And he was going to source a lot of really old Armagnacs. And we're talking 50 to over 150 years old and work blends from there. And then he, I think if the story goes, because there's a book, the book right there in front, lots of, you know, story information about him and how he came up with this. And supposedly he was in France and uh, some Armagnac farm, uh, you know, of course they grow vineyards over there and then they distilled the harvest. Uh, but one of them had some Armagnac in an Isla cask and he really loved it, so he decided that's what he wanted to do. So he sourced uh, about eight vintages going back to 1868, the youngest being 1970. So 50 to over 150 years, works blends, throws them into Isla you know, peated casks and lets them sit in there for just a couple weeks, not too long. And then he pulls them and bottles them as individual barrels. So this is barrel one, by the way. Uh, each bottle typically, I believe they come signed. This one is signed by Raj. Um, but when batch uh, barrel one came out, that was around 2019, 2020, I guess it was almost immediately when those came out. Retail pricing about $250. This one's bottled at 44.8% ABV. Um, what else do we need to know about it? Uh, I think now they're up to barrel 20 and sold out. If you go into their website, they're sold out. So probably your best chance to get these are going to be in big chain stores that probably get allocations of this. He said when he first came out with this, it was $250, and he was trying to kind of like tell everybody to basically almost invest in this. So it was like, you know, buy it, it's a good buy, and then each year we're going to raise the price. And I think he's, you know, it, it's comparatively, when he's talking about old cognacs or old single malt scotches, of course, when you start getting to 50 years, you're talking thousands of dollars. So he's almost, I think, trying to take the Armagnac industry into that kind of realm single-handedly so that's going to be very interesting to see how that works out uh, but I'm just here to give you tasting notes and my opinions on both of these all right now over here the Mark DeRose done uh, DeRose 50 this is a bottle at 43 percent so slightly lower retail pricing on this one's going to be ranging somewhere around 250 to 500 dollars and that's because I've been seeing new stores putting them out at 500 but of course I still see these every now and then for about 250 so you might search around and find this one for a better price um, no finishing of course this is just all great to glass right here 50 years in French oak all right let's go ahead and get to the nose on the DeRose 50 As a matter of fact I'm gonna nose it and I think I'm just gonna taste it this is gonna be a good baseline okay on the nose the sugar component, I'm going to say, is a little more depth than just caramel. This is like caramel, a little brown sugar, and maybe even a little touch of sorghum. Yeah. Then there's a really strong red fruit component. Lots of cherry, lots of raspberry, a little hint of maybe dried strawberries. And then you start getting into the fig, and then you start getting into the, the date component behind those, actually. Now, they're not super fresh. Those, those red fruits are kind of like um, maybe caramelized a little bit with some brown sugar, a little hint of butter as well. Cinnamon is in here, cardamom underneath that. That's a little unusual, but that's in there. The nose almost reminds me of a little bit of the, the pink bubble gum, right? from back in the day. That's got a little bit of that nose essence going on. Good amount of oak, but it's not overwhelming, so I do like that. It's very fresh. It's very fruit forward, fruit driven. You do still get the grape aspect to everything. 
and then you get a little bit of a little bit of a bookish dustiness going on and a, just a hint not quite apple cider vinegar but maybe a little more of like a mahogany polish so a, like a piece of mahogany well oiled I get a little bit of that in there very very nice okay let's go ahead and taste it while we just did that let's do it all right i'm going to start always priming especially with old armagnacs old cognacs just a couple of drops on the tongue kind of get it palate uh, ready for it and then i'm going to gauge the second draw here we go whoa nice okay here we go medium high viscosity just as it kind of knows it drives immediately uh, with lots of that good rich great backbone but then immediately followed by those kind of caramelized fruits the the raspberry the cherry the st tr strawberry it's a little lighter on the strawberry that's pressed right up and then you start getting sweet dates and a little fig and behind that and i'm almost thinking like a fig jelly because it's not really tasting like uh, straight fig. There's a little bit more sweetness to it. So fig jelly in there. Wow, lots of cinnamon kind of peaking on the mid palate. Cardamom laying underneath still. Vanilla backbone from the oak and those oak sugars is underneath everything because I almost get a little bit of red licorice in there. And I think that's the component that I was picking up is bubble gum on the nose. But on the palate, it feels like red licorice. Rich, heavy, uh, I would say like a 60% dark chocolate onto the back end with the nice lingering oak. The oak is definitely heavy, but it's not tannic. It's not dry. It's not coming off like, um, you know, sometimes you'll get those pecan shell tannins really drying things out. Here, uh, there is a little bit of a nuttiness. So the Roncio from it being 50 years old is coming off to me like a little bit of walnut character on the back end with that oak. But there's not a lot of rancio in the tones that, like, when I usually think of rancio, I'm thinking, um, you know, soil, uh, mushrooms, sometimes, you know, kind of uh, heavy cheeses, that type of aspect. That's not in here. Um, just that little hint of walnut character in with that really heavy oak. But I will say the fruits really drive through. They linger even on well onto the finish. I imagine this finish is going to last five to ten minutes, okay? It's still just hanging on the palate. Very, very nicely done uh, from for the DeRose 50. I'm going to have to cut it short with a little water so we can move on to the Bacta 50. Mm, little double one. Here we go. Okay, Bacta 50. On the nose... Mm, much darker on the nose. This is definitely more into the brown sugar molasses territory. I tell you what, this is surprising though. I'm not picking up a lot of peat smoke. Because it did spend two weeks in peated isla casks. But on the nose, you don't really pick the... I mean, there's like a little bit of a roasted espresso bean type thing going on. But it doesn't present itself as peat. Fruit wise, I would say there's lots of stewed plums, figs, dates, a little bit of prune, and a little bit of raisin going on here. It's definitely into the darker tones. A little hint of orange oil, but lots of rancio. So the rancio here is going to be. A little bit of that damp earthiness, a little mushroom. It's not super heavy. I've had heavier Roncio profiles, but now look, yeah, it's pretty nice though. Let's see if that holds true on the palate. Okay, here we go. Oh wow, transitions. Hmm. Hmm. That's a little... Okay, here we go. Yeah, 
Pinners, a little more viscous than the DeRose 50, but not a ton. Really ch changes on the palate. So as it enters, you get this really nice soft entry, and you can definitely tell this is old Armagnac. Lots of that kind of dusty character right up front. Wow, it, trains, it changes so much that it's almost hard to refocus on the, the very beginning. So it's very distracting the way it transitions. Sometimes uh, spirits will develop and transition, scotch whiskeys, uh, scotch single malts especially, where they transition, and even though they change, you can still pick up the front. But because of the peat in this one, it really kind of really does start to kind of almost like a smoke screen where it's like so heavy in that aspect that it kind of mutes what was happen happening early. I'm gonna have to rerun this. All right. Here we go. I'm try to focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a little bit of that great, that stewed um, plums. You get the fig, you get the date happening. And right about here, before you even head up into the mid palate, and spice swell, there's a little cinnamon swell. But it's right, right when the spice is starting to pick up, you get hit with the peat. And the peat on this, initially, it does feel like peat smoke. As it lingers and starts falling over onto the back end, and it starts focusing a little more on like a, a chocolate, dark chocolate, bitter dark chocolate, as a matter of fact. The, the oak is there, and then you start picking up, to me, it's like almost like a... Oh, it's definitely start heading into the prune-ish territory, but there's a coffee bean element that is really kind of distracting. It's almost like ground coffee, not even like green coffee beans, which will give you fruit and floral type tones. This is ground dark roast coffee, uh, and with a little bit of like stewed bell peppers. Um, it sounds really weird. It's actually really common in the craft beer world. I mean, Prairie was doing it forever with their bomb where you get this chocolate pepper chili uh, tone and dark, you know, and it's just, I don't know, this is what that reminds me of on the back end. Let me rerun this. It is very unusual. Now I do like, I, I, there's some things I like about this, and then there's some things I don't like about the peat. I like how it enters up front. It kind of adds just an extra layer of complexity with the peat smoke. You get all those dark fruits still lingering. You do get a little bit of like a cherry raspberry freshness, but it's as if they're cooked down with brown sugar. And then as it rolls over on the back end, that's where I'm starting to pick up the bell pepper, stewed bell pepper, dark chocolate, and that rich the kind of coffee element because it no longer feels like peat smoke. It starts feeling like a lot like coffee on the back end. Do you still get all those stone fruits coming through? Yes, you still get that. You know, I'm really torn on this one because the DeRose 50, I love it, right? It's really good. Is it the best of the line? Probably not. Matter of fact, I might review my favorite of the line uh, for my patrons. Uh, at the end of this video, I always like to give them a little bonus footage. Uh, so I'll probably review that one beside these. As a matter of fact, I might even show two because there's one I'm thinking, because, you know, when you're thinking about uh, Raj Bakhtan, and he's talking about, you know, Armagnac's going to be the next big thing and we can get in very cheap and, you know, maybe you can invest in it. I'm, me, I love drinking the spirits, so that's not even an issue. Uh, but, you know, there's some other spirits that come to mind that, and Armagnac, other brands that come to mind that might be better for that than even this. Um, me personally, not the, it's more it lingers on my palate. I think it's uh, at 250, I'd be really happy with it. At 500, not so much because I could almost get two of these or definitely get two or three of the others that I'm going to review on Patreon. but. Um, it's good. It's a really high quality spirit. You can definitely tell this is old Armagnac. The peat is just really cool initially. How it It's like peat smoke, but then it transitions and that's where it really kind of gets a little distracting. So I almost wish this was not peated. 
I think he would have been on to something had he just done the old vintage blends. That would have been amazing. Uh, and that would have been worth $500. Okay. I just think the peat actually distracts from what the beauty of the transition, national, uh, natural transition that the Armagnac would have taken. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, for YouTube. Thank you, of course, to my patrons. I'm going to add on to this. But thank you for watching and keep leaving all those great comments. Uh, of course, you can join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound where you can get these videos ad-free. You're going to get the bonus content that I like to do for them. Um, and yeah, if you can, join us over there. But thank you as always. Have a great day and cheers.